Lesson 1, 6, Multiply Integers. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to expand our knowledge about it, adding integers into the operation of multiplication. Let's take a quick look at the Explore It problem. A popular beach erodes four inches per year on average. Well, first of all, we need to know what the word erode means, and you might remember this from science class. Okay, erosion is a type of wasting away. So in other words, the beach is disappearing four inches per year on average. So question A says, how many years will it take the coastline to erode one foot? Well, we know that there are 12 inches in a foot. And if it's eroding four inches per year, we're looking for the amount of time it will take for it to erode 12 inches. In this problem, erosion would represent a negative integer. In other words, four inches of coastline are disappearing each year. So what can I multiply by a negative four in order to get one foot of erosion, which again in this case would be a negative 12. So how many groups of negative four do we need to get to negative 12? Well, remember we can look at this multiplication problem from the standpoint of repeated addition. So after one year, the coastline would erode four feet. After two years, it would erode another four feet, which is a total of negative eight feet. And then if I add one more year of erosion, I will get a negative 12. Therefore, four times, or I'm sorry, negative four times three equals a negative 12. Now take a look at part B. The number line below shows the expected change in the coastline as years pass. How could you use the number line to show the erosion after 10 years? Well, if zero represents the coastline this year, then we could repeatedly add groups of negative four until we got 10 years down the road. There's seven, and I would have to expand this. 8, 9, 10. So the question is, what number is this point right here on the number line? So if we're counting by negative 4, we go back negative 4, negative 8, then we have negative 12, negative 16, negative 20, negative 24, negative 28, I'm running out of space, sorry, negative 32, negative 36, and negative 40. Again, we can also look at this from a multiplication standpoint. If we know that the beach is eroding four inches per year for 10 years, then we would know that negative four times 10 makes that negative 40 inches after 10 years. And the way the number line helps us get that information is by repeatedly counting by that negative four. Now let's take a look at the essential question and example one. How do the signs of factors affect their product? Remember, factors are the numbers within that multiplication problem. Okay, so these are your factors. And your product is the answer. Example one. In this example, we're going to learn about multiplying a negative integer by a positive integer. While playing a board game, unlucky Lawrence had to move back two spaces for four turns in a row. What integer represents his change in position? 
we can use both a game board, or in this case, even easier, a number line, in order to represent the change in his position. So zero is going to represent Lawrence's starting position. He moves back two spaces, so you can see here that we've got groups of negative two, negative two, negative two, and negative two, okay, because moving backwards would be a negative number, and he has to do this four times in a row. So four groups of negative two, or repeatedly adding negative two together four times, is going to give us a product of negative eight. So negative eight represents the change in position on the board, or unlucky Lawrence had to move back a total of eight spaces. Now the second strategy that they show you over here on the right side of the page is not a very common strategy that students tend to use, but I'm gonna go through it anyway, just in case this makes sense to you and you find that it's helpful. Use multiplication and properties of operations to show why four times negative two equals negative eight. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna take a look at this very first line here that says four times and then in parentheses, negative two plus positive two equals zero. So they've completely changed the question on us. And what they're trying to get us to understand is that four times zero equals zero. Would you agree with that? Any number times zero is zero. So they've expanded that zero in the multiplication to use additive inverses. In other words, negative two and positive two make zero. Those are your additive inverses. Okay, we can also use that zero property of multiplication to rewrite that um, in this form. And then we have what we use um, called the distributive property, where we take that four on the outside and we distribute it and multiply it times each piece inside those parentheses. So the four on the outside gets multiplied by the negative two, which you see here. And the four on the outside gets multiplied times the positive two, which you see here. Now together, four times a negative two plus four times a positive two should still equal zero. Now let's take a look at the next line. Four times negative two is actually the problem that we're trying to solve. We already know that four times two is equal to eight. So now the question is, what number can I add to positive eight to make zero? In this case, we know that they, it has to be its opposite or its additive inverse. We know that negative eight and positive eight make zero. So what goes in that red box here, in this red box has to be a negative eight. In other words, four times negative two is that negative eight in order to make that entire structure correct. Now, in general, this is the important piece. Okay. Anytime you have a positive and a negative number multiplied together, the answer is always negative. So positive times negative equals negative. Now see if you can complete the triad. If the boxes aren't making sense, then you can work over on the white space and try that question on your own. Then come back and check your answer when you've finished. Okay, go ahead and check your answer. Did you notice that taking away those six points is going to produce a negative six integer? So if we take away six points on 10 different cones, then that means we will have taken away 60 points altogether. So the change in total points is a negative 60. Now look at the convince me. Is it ever the case that the product of a positive integer and a negative integer could be positive? And the answer is no. Remember that multiplication is repeated, addi repeated addition. So 
So repeatedly adding a negative number will always produce a negative answer.